Yo, Philadelphia, what's happening? Welcome to Investor Schooling Live. Coming to you from Investor Schooling Headquarters in Langhorn, Pennsylvania. I'm Phil Falcone here with Larry Steinhaus. He's my business partner. And we are the founders of Investor Schooling. Get ready to learn real estate and stock option investing. Call us with your questions now at 855-939-1137. That's right. We are a live program. Not like all these recorded shows you get every weekend on the radio. We're live. You can pick up the phone and call us. 855-939-1137. Call us anytime. We don't even care what we're talking about. If you call us with a question, we will take your call. We have an operator, John Cole, on the line with us today. He'll be answering the calls and patching you through. Investor Schooling is located in Langhorne, Pennsylvania, serving the Philadelphia area in a real brick-and-mortar building. That's correct. We're local Philadelphia guys, accessible to our students a minimum of two nights per week. If you want to learn this business, that's the real estate business, that's the stock option investing business, you want to learn it from people who live it every day. So, Larry, what's happening, man? So I have a question for you, Phil. I want to know what you think it's like to be famous. Uh, I wouldn't know. Well, I don't know. I kind of think that we are becoming famous. I, I was actually, you know, we had an interesting we had an interesting dinner the other night. We, we went out to dinner. We went to Tony's, where we usually go. And we noticed that the people next to us, sitting, you know, across from us, were they six feet apart from us? I, I don't know. But I think they, they might have I been measured, six feet. I actually got my tape measure and measured it. They were six and a half feet. Okay, right? good. They was, and they kept, you know, they were whispering, and they kept pointing over us, and they kept whispering, kept pointing. Actually, I think they were pointing at you specifically. And then finally, the person said, what did they say? Hey, are you that guy on the radio? And, and Phil said, of course, that's, that's us. That's, that's who we are. We're Dom Giordano. I like Dom Giordano. I know you do, but that's but but it wasn't interesting that people recognized actually recognized your voice and knew it was you. That was pretty cool. Well, that's because I was uh, I believe I was doing a line from the commercial. I was saying I could teach you how to buy ugly houses and make them beautiful. I, it's exactly what you were doing, but but I think they actually noticed it before you started doing that. And I think you just tipped them off completely when you did that and made them and made them realize that that's who you were. So you were that what famous you're saying guy. is. I have the capability of being famous if I just walk around saying that line over and over again. I think you might, actually. I think that's probably a good idea. I think you should actually go around saying that line over and over again. I know that when I'm in my car, I hear that line all day long. We, yes. Well, we, get, uh, we get some great coverage of radio commercials uh, by 1210, and uh, I would say they're my favorite station. Oh, that listen to you. Oh, that's so sweet of you. I know, I'm such so there's a, another thing, so too, sweet. which I put a post on the other day on Facebook, and I said, who's funnier, Phil Falcone or Larry Steinhaus? Well, I was very, very hurt by the answer to this question. <laughs> Have you? Were you following it? I glanced at it, that's all. Just glanced at it, huh? Yeah. I okay. don't spend a lot of time on Facebook. I know. I spend way too much time on Facebook. And, and all the people on Facebook right now, hey, if you're on Facebook right now, click the click the uh, heart button so we know you're so we know you're paying attention and, and that you really like us. Click the heart button. So far, there's no heart button. So. I probably spend more time going on to uh, the internet, checking to see what the price of Facebook is, than Same I do here. Yeah. to actually go on Facebook. Well, I, I probably don't do that. I probably go on Facebook more often than I check the price, but I check the price a lot. F Facebook was a nice play. I liked that play the other day, too. All right, we got one heart. We got a heart. I'm so excited. Can somebody else give us another heart on Facebook? That'd be awesome. So, by the way, in case you were wondering, yes, Phil won. They thought Phil was funnier, and I'm still upset about it. In fact, I'm about to resign from investor schooling because Phil is funnier. Well, I don't want you to do that because we kind of need you around here. All right. But, uh, you know, hey, look, uh, you you uh, put this question out there knowing you were probably going to lose that question. I know. It was either that or, or, or you know, or put out uh, who knows more about stock options, me or Phil. But, you know, we already knew the answer to that one. Or you could put out something like uh, which one of us is smarter or we, which one of us is bigger. Or, which or one taller. Of us, <laughs> or which one of us is... More successful. You can put out things like that. Or so. which one of us is crazier? <laughs> I 
haven't heard that one. Is that a new one? That's a new one. <laughs> Right. I've got others too. So why don't we actually pretend that we know something about real estate and stock options and talk about that? Okay. Well, uh, usually at this time of the show, I would come out and say, these are the topics we're going to talk about today. But I felt like going in a different direction today. We had so much fun last week uh, verbally abusing Ed as our guest. <laughs> Ed's and, one of our students, in case you weren't yeah, listening last yeah. week. <laughs> and uh, that I had actually suggested that we bring on more whipping posts. I mean people. I mean students. Uh, bring them onto the show so we could have some fun with them because I thought it was a lot of fun. But this week what I've done, instead of coming up with just three topics, I've come up with some topics in a, you know, I guess you could say they're in a question format. And I was going to question you, Larry, and see if you just want to give me a true and false and uh, expand on your answer if you feel like it. If you don't, no problem. Whatever. I uh, know. This is what I'm thinking. That's not really scary music you got there. I'm going to be worried, aren't I? Do you want to do this or not? <laughs> you told me to start talking about real estate. <laughs> Now you're playing a bunch of sounds. Let's go. Let's get on with it. Go ahead. Tell me, tell me, right. tell me what it is. Go ahead. What, what's the first Welcome question? Welcome to Investor Schooling wait, Live. Wait. Let's it's give the phone number out. 855-939-1137. That's 855-939-1137. <laughs> if you want to call us at any time, don't worry about our whatever we're talking about. Just call us. And if you want to say true or false, you can say true or false, too, when you call 855-939-1137. Or you can say it on uh, Facebook Live. Yeah, on Facebook. Okay, yeah, so yeah. here's the first statement. The best way to buy property is with none of your own money. I'm going to say false. Hmm. I'm surprised to hear you say that. <laughs> when you, you, you want the me best to tell way you? to prop, buy property is with none of your own money, and you're saying false? Well, I, I, I'm going to add something to that. That's why. Okay. Well, I, well expand, my man. I expand. always buy properties with none of my own money, but I also go to closing and get money back. So if you add the sentence, the best way to buy properties with none of your own money and getting – I'm sorry. is How did you put it? I said the best way to buy property is with none of your own money. So I'm going to add the best way to buy properties is with none of your own money as long as you get some money back at closing. Then it's the best way. But since this is a true and false segment, would you <laughs> mind filling us in? Okay, it's true. You think it's true? Absolutely. It's First, you said it's false. Well, I wanted to add. In, I true. wanted to add in my second part because when yeah. I go buy properties with no money, I get money back at closing. It's okay if you want to continue this segment. We could create a new category called false true or true false. Well, I, we could add another segment called true or false, or could we add some more stuff to the sentence? Sure, I'm cool with that. Okay. All right. How about this one? Do you need good credit to be a wholesaler? Absolutely not. Oh wait, false. True. False. False. True. True. False. Absolutely not. <laughs> There's only two answers. True or false. Well, then not, you expand. But you said, do you need... That's a yes or no question. It's not a true or false question. You have to you have to make a statement, and the statement has to be true or false. Do you need good credit to be a wholesaler? Do you, no. Here, here's the way it should be done. It should be... It should be... You need good credit to be a wholesaler. That would be a true or false statement. You asked a yes or no question. No, a true and false question. No, no, no. It's not a question. <laughs> That's a question. It's yes or no. Don't make me come over the there. The statement is, do you need money to be a wholesaler? False. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, now you got me doing it. <laughs> imagine us. Just, just imagine, guys. You know, you come to Investor Schooling this Thursday night, and you get to learn from us. Can, can, how much confidence do you have so far in us? Let's move to the next question. <laughs> Realtors provide great value to their clients. Uh, be uh, nice. Uh, uh, Might be a couple of realtors out there listening. Uh, well, yeah, true. Some of, the, some of them provide some great of, value. Yeah, I, 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 yeah and value is, is a subjective anyway, so I'm going to have to say true. Wow. He's, so, he's silent I'm, on that one. I'm, I'm, I'm shocked. Like, he's like, <laughs> That's it? Are you done? You don't I'm have done. anything else to say? No, well, what do you want me to do? Are you oh, aware you want... that you're a talk show host? I'm totally you're confused. Expected to I am totally confused at what you want me to do here. Do you want me to expand on this or not? You, 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 
I this, wait, to wait. Okay. On it, but Everybody I... listening, you need to understand that this all started because two weeks ago he told me that I talk too much and I need to be quiet so he can talk more. So he's doing this so I would only say true or false. Now he wants me to continue to talk anyway. No, so I'm gonna... I never said you talk too much. I said uh, occasionally I've said you're boring. <laughs> Other times I said you speak with a run-on sentence. But I don't believe I said what you said I just said. What, what did I – I, I think oh. – all right, I'm going I, home. Goodbye. I never said Show's over. Too much. <laughs> All right. What's the next true or false yes or no question? Okay. The next true or false yes or no maybe question is, if you talk really loud in restaurants, will people recognize your voice? <laughs> You went. You went to the same place I went to. Huh? <laughs> I, I I understand that they will. Uh, you know, but but I talk really loud in restaurants, and people don't recognize my. They don't recognize that I'm the guy from Investor Schooling. They recognize you're the guy from Investor Schooling, not me. Well, I have a very unique voice. Yes, you do. Even do I've been documented by the great Dom Giordano as having a unique sounding voice. Yes, I remember that conversation. Remember when you called called in, and he st he he actually did a whole segment the next day on unique voices because of you. All right, let's keep going. I'm having fun with this true or false or maybe or yes or no segment. All right. Okay, the next question is, can you be dumber than a rock and still invest in real estate? <laughs> so, I've, seen, I've seen several people who are dumber than a rock invest in real estate. Answer the question, So right? the answer is absolutely yes. The answer is true. You yes. don't need to be a the point is, you don't need to be a genius to be in this business. Anybody who has common sense, you could be dead broke. You could have no credit. You could have absolutely no prospects for borrowing other people's money or, or banks' money or anything. Could you make money in real estate, Larry? Absolutely. Absolutely you could. Absolutely. Effort. Suppose, let me just give you a quick example. Suppose you went out there. And you walked around neighborhoods and you gave out flyers and you knocked on doors. And you said to people who answered the door, hi, my name is uh, Jane and I work for a uh, private investing company that's looking to buy a couple of houses in this neighborhood. Would you happen to know anyone in this neighborhood who might be selling their house? And the neighbors, you'd be surprised. Neighbors know everything. They know who's, who's in bankruptcy. They know who's getting divorced. They know who recently just died. They know who can't afford to make their payments. Uh, neighbors know everything. The postman knows more than everything. The postman knows everything and then some because he sees all the mail coming to your house. If you want to learn something about a neighborhood, ask the postman. Ask the neighbors. And then guess what you do with that information? You've now found a house that's potentially for sale. If you found a house that's potentially for sale, call up your good buddy Phil Falcone and Larry Steinhaus at 855-939-1137 and we will buy that property from you, possibly right on the air. How about that? That would be fun, actually. Actually, yeah, if you got a property up for sale, give us a call, 855-939-1137. That would be fun for us to buy the property on the air. It would be entertaining, if nothing else. And, and look, you know, we'll, we'll pay you a little bit extra just because you're on the air. And we, we, uh, we had the entertainment value as well. But if you want to call about anything else, 855-939-1137. We love talking to our, to, the, to our fans, our listeners, and even to people who just happen to turn to the radio station going, who the heck are these guys? Mm -hmm. Any one of you is welcome to call, 855-939-1137. Do you have any more true or false statements for me? Yeah, I got a couple more. You want me to keep uh, going? Let's keep going. This is fun. All right. Here's a tough one. Does Mary Ann Farrell think she cannot be an investor? What? Does Mary Ann Farrell think she cannot be an investor? <laughs> I, I think she thinks she can. Did you you know who I'm talking about, right? Oh, my, my, uh, I'm not sure. Mary Ann Farrell is the woman who sent you a text. Oh, yes, yes, last yes, week. yes. Oh, now I know who you're talking about. Okay. I know exactly who you're talking about. Yes. Sorry about that. I think right? Mary Ann should call us right now at 855-939-1137. We want to talk to her. We're going to give you a free uh, five-minute coaching session on the line right now. Mary Ann, <laughs> I order you to call us right now. 855-939-1137. 
she, she probably is listening too. Yeah, she's on. She was on Facebook, and she tagged us in a post and said that she thought we were hysterical and she loves our show, but she doesn't think she could be a real estate investor. And we believe she can. So we we actually would love to teach her just so we could prove that she can be a real estate investor. So for right now, I want to go on the record and say that I am going to be unhappy with Mary Ann Farrell until she calls us. Now, it I'm is possible. Also, wait, I'm not finished. I'm also okay. unhappy with the guy who called me a mafiosa shyster. Are we going to go back to that again? I want that guy to call me. I want to have it out with him. Yeah, so in case you guys, again, if you're listening for the first time, this is what happened. He sounds like a mafioso shyster. <laughs> that's what that's what somebody called in and told us about. So we have a caller, and since we're going nowhere with this uh, true and false segment, why don't we bring in Tony from New Jersey? Hey, Tony, how, how do you like living in a communist communist state? Hello. Hey, how do you like living in a communist state? No, it's wonderful. This guy just gets better and better every day. Yeah, well, hopefully yeah. we keep our fingers crossed. Hopefully we keep our fingers crossed over the next couple of weeks. Things are going to. You know, turn around for the best. You know what I mean? And yeah, I, the I think virus is going to disappear I, right after the election. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, right, I exactly. And listen, school, listen, and I don't want to go political here, but, you know, they're just saying everything about schools. Okay, don't be surprised if it wasn't the wrong move with these mail and bails because now these kids are jammed up with not, with not being able to vote because they're stuck in their dorms. So it may backfire on them 100%. So we already know what's going to happen. We already know that, that uh, you know, two weeks from now there's going to be headlines in the newspaper – Christmas miracle, COVID has gone yeah. away. You can now go shopping. You can now do anything you wanted in your right. own mask. By the way, are you in your car alone, Tony? Yes, I am. Are you wearing a mask? No. Why would I okay. be wearing a mask? There's nobody else. There's nobody else to be in my car to infect me. What you, just, oh, I, please, I, don't give me stuff. Don't give me I just want to know because if if you were in your car alone and wearing a mask, then I would know you were a Biden supporter. That's all. Yeah, well, I was. No, I was. You know, the, that, you, know uh, you know that's not the issue. So. <laughs> if we can I was move in on, Pennsylvania. Hey, Tony. <laughs> hey, okay. Tony's telling us to move on. He wants to go to. He wants to talk about real estate or stock options. Okay. Well, I I yeah. just want to share with Tony something. I was at the Pennsylvania right. Grand Canyon this week, right? Uh-huh. Uh huh. I don't know if you ever been there. It's all the way up by Williamsport, even further than that, up by nah, Penn State. Right? Not. And nah. uh, I'm at I'm at an elevation level of eighteen hundred and. This story what? long or short? We, we don't have much Why, time. you we'll you got a hot that. date or something? No, I want to talk real estate, you know. Okay, well, we're not, we're not hanging up on you, man. Be All cool. right, good, let's go. Okay. You know, it's Time usually the money. host that... Right. It's usually the, the host that that uh that, right. it's that moves the host that's hanging the, up the, on people. I know, really. Listen to this guy. Oh, hey, listen. Go ahead, guys. Hey, hey, hey no, 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 no. I, I see, I see what we've created now. It's the Tony Show. Hey, Tony, would, would, can yeah. you help us out here? We have a real estate sure question. Sure, I can. I listen. I can be better than answer true or false. What you just did the last segment. So. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what my head was spinning. That's why it urged me to call. So anyway, I'm at the Pennsylvania Grand Canyon, elevation level, 1,850 feet above sea okay. level, and I see a right. woman wearing a mask by herself. Oh, I'm like, what are you doing, lady? <laughs> it's the cleanest air on the planet here right now. What the I heck know. are you wearing a mask for? All right. Just, Let's let's let Tony get to his question because yeah. he, he, we don't want to get we don't want to get Tony mad. He's, he's got a date or something. No, he's, I don't have a date. I'm just you know anxious. Guys, you know, with a voice like me. that, I can understand why you don't have a date. Yeah. <laughs> you, you got. I don't know who this is eating here. Um, you guys, you guys, do you to the same belief. Uh, guys, um, first time. Let me ask you a question. Would you guys say, um, is it better to do a rental? Or is it better to do a, a, a an acquisition, renovation, and flip and turn over? What what would you do um, if you were in my situation? So, so Tony's asking just because so, I know he's cut out a little bit. Investor, first okay. time investor, would you would you think um, doing a rental property, holding on to that, or doing an acquisition, renovation, and turnover? I'd like to ask you some more questions. Okay, go ahead. How how old are you? Me, um, yeah. early fifties. Early fifties. Okay. Do you live by yourself? No, I do not. Okay. You got any questions for him, Larry? No, I I think. Uh, do you want to get wealthy or do you want to make some money? Uh, I like to do both, actually. Well, so so <laughs> like they, they 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 are congruent. However, you know, uh, mm -hmm. you, you can make a lot more money now, or you can mm -hmm. make a lot 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 more money later. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's what you have to decide what you want to do. So there's getting wealthy, which is buy and hold, or there's uh, you know buying and flipping, which is making money. So you know if you want to pay your bills right now, you can buy a house, renovate it, and maybe get thirty, fifty thousand dollars, and and pay off your bills and go do something else and do it again. Or one of the things that I like to do, I like to hold every mm-hmm. single property I ever buy. I don't want to sell mm-hmm. my properties anymore. I want to keep them because they generate cash flow. And the cash flow mm-hmm. for me is my retirement money. I mean, I don't know about you, but Correct. I have a pension. Correct. Correct. I understand that. Sure. Uh, One of the easiest okay. ways to get rich in this business is to buy a bunch of houses and keep them forever and never sell right. any of them. Now, reality right. is that you have to sell them from time to time. Things go – things you go through a rough patch. You got to do something. Right. You need some money. You, you, at least you have these houses. And you, and you thank the Lord that you have all these assets and that you can sell a couple of them to get mm-hmm. out of whatever jam you're in. Mm-hmm. Correct. Let me all ask right, you a question, have... guys. When, when right, you're looking at, what's your average percentage that you think would, would, would be, would be um, like, not, I don't want to say profitable, but would be a margin of what you think. For instance, I have an opportunity to do an acquisition uh, renovation and and possible turnover, making somewhere in the neighborhood of around thirty thousand. Um, okay. It, it, okay. My question to you is: um, Is there is there a amount that you feel that with doing all that work that that's going to be like like? Do you gauge yourself? So it just seems to me it, it, it's a lot. It's going to be a lot of work to get to that thirty thousand like mark. Where I feel is. Uh, what I'm trying to say is, like, like, is there, is there, like, if if you're going in, if you're purchasing a house, all right, Tony, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you a question because you're you're talking to run on sentences now. You ready? So you're trying right. to figure out yeah. whether thirty thousand dollars is enough money to for a project. If the project Correct. takes three weeks, of course thirty thousand is enough. If it takes six right. months, it might not be. If it takes two years, it's oh, definitely wow. not. Right. But here's it's what not. here's what the difference is for you. The difference is it's your first project. And if it's your first right. project and you make thirty thousand dollars, you made a yeah. lot more than thirty thousand dollars. You made experiences and you yeah. learned lessons that you would have never yeah. learned without doing that project. So yeah, I would say right. go for it. Right. I know that's what I've right. been to tell my wife. You know, it's a good opportunity in here. Um, I'm also looking to be somewhere in the Pennsylvania side also because you know, over here we have a problem with taxes. That's our biggest right. problem here. Is when, you, when you start to get to a situation and you start figuring your taxes and insurance, yes. it kind of knocks you out of the ballpark in New Jersey. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, that's why we. That's why we call it the. That's why we call it the communist country of New yeah, Jersey. Yeah, exactly. So, Tony, I, I hate right. to do this, but your audio is really, really bad, and it's yeah, really hard for us to understand you. But it's all right. Listen, but one, this is what I'm going to recommend you do: go to investorschooling.com. Log on. You can mm-hmm. either come to class in person, or you can come to class via Zoom, and you can ask uh-huh. ask this question. Uh, you can ask this question to us during the, during the class. So, so Thursday right. night, this Thursday night, seven o'clock. Go to investorschooling.com, right. and uh, and right. we're looking forward to having you in the class, man. But, I, I, okay. but unfortunately, I got I got to let you go because, like I said, the, the audio is not that great. All right. So at okay. this point, I'd like to know where the heck is Marianne Farrell. <laughs> Marianne, you're not listening. What are you afraid to call? Did you forget the number? 855-939-1137. Mary Ann Farrell, 855-939-1137. Does she get, a, does she get a, a gift card or something? We, <laughs> what we, for? We, we, no, she, she doesn't get anything unless she calls. No, her. no. If she calls in, she gets a $100 gift card. Like a $100 Visa gift card. You know why? Because you keep calling her name out there, and I feel like we're at a game show. So we're going to send her a $100 gift card if she calls in. But she has to prove she's the, she has to prove she's the one. All right. We got a couple more true and false questions. All right. I'm, wait, I'm ready. Let me go. Is Phil the person who keeps mentioning the Delaware Valley Tennis Club? Is Phil the person who keeps mentioning the Delaware Valley Tennis Club? What's the Delaware Valley Tennis Club? I, I never heard of it. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking of which, yes. By the way, true. But speaking of which, who is who is the who's the advertiser this week that we're going to give free advertising for? Uh, I have no intentions of giving free advertising. Oh, okay. Anybody. I mean, Except no. Mary Ann Farrell. The last two weeks we gave all this free advertising. No, this week uh, I'm I'm talking about Marianne Farrell. So you know, Marianne. So so she, Marianne may actually be listening to us on a different station, 
because I don't think she tagged us on a, on a Wednesday. So we are, so if you guys, just so you guys know, we record this show live at 3 o'clock on Sunday. So if you're listening to this show and it's not 3 o'clock on a Sunday, then you're listening to a recorded version of this show. But if you call the number 855-939-1137, someone will still answer the phone and still be able to answer your question. So feel free to call right now because we're live right now. But if you're listening to us right now and we're a recorded show, we're not live right now. It's not like kind of like uh, Schrodinger's cat. Hmm. Maybe. Do you have a sound to go with that or what? I, I, I might. I, hold on. I'll, 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 look for, I'll look for one. While, while you're looking for it, let me hit you yeah. with another question. Okay. Is Facebook the greatest stock option play at earnings? It usually is the greatest stock option play at earnings, so I like it a lot. So I'm going to say yes. It's, uh, would you say it's almost, almost a sure thing? So, all right, so let's, get, let's just real quick about stock options because I'll answer the question the way, you're, the way you're asking it. So any, just about every stock, as you start to hit the earnings date, the earnings announcement date, the stock starts to go up as well as the time value starts to go up. So you could time this really, really well. And we, we've hit it quite a few times this week, the last two weeks. We hit quite a few runs on Facebook. I made one of the largest amounts of money I ever made in one single play uh, this week on a Facebook play, and I sold it early, and I made I made a really a lot of money. It was a great it was a great play, and uh, so yeah. So if you're buying stock options, you can do it. So this week Facebook is going to come up. Their earnings is in four days. Now so we're not getting another chance to buy and sell it. Unless there's a like a major crash. Unless we're down like yeah. 15 points on Monday. Yeah, if it's a major crash tomorrow, yeah. If not, I would just stay away. Do I believe that Facebook's going to be in the 300s by the end of the week? Probably, but it's not. A, it's not. A, it's not a play that I would play. It's it's a speculation play, and typically Facebook goes down after earnings anyway. So typically it hits earnings, and then maybe it goes up, you know, a few points, and then all of a sudden it drops. Now Snap went insane the other day, which is what caused Facebook to go. We actually played Facebook with Snap's earnings, and we didn't know it because it just happened to happen. So Facebook played out with Snap's earnings, and I don't think I I don't know what's going to happen. But I do know that Facebook probably will hit 300, 3 something. And then whatever it hits, it'll then drop and create new numbers for us to play with. So we may have to wait a little while. We may have to wait 30 days before we go back in. But it's going to be some great plays coming up. And I, I love it. Apple, I was shocked that Apple did not go up Friday. I was really shocked that Apple didn't go up Friday. I, I, and uh, still, still, still stinging me, actually. But I believe that also uh, Apple's earnings is in four days, too. Uh, Apple usually goes up after earnings, which is interesting. It usually jumps up, eh, just a few, you know, usually jumps up probably anywhere in two, two or three percent, which would be a nice play for us if we are in it. I'm in it pretty heavily, and I'll let you know. Okay, I got a couple mm. more questions. Sure. You want to keep going? Absolutely, especially you know with with uh, how important this is. I mean, this is so important. We haven't even done a commercial yet. Yeah, who cares? That's how good you are. Who cares about the commercials? Well, We're not interested in making money with this show. We're just having fun. Well, it, it, that's for sure. Is Tesla the most overvalued stock in the world? <laughs> it's the most overvalued stock I've ever seen. Yeah, it's insane. <laughs> it's in, it is insane. Why I, don't you I, talk a little bit about uh, wow. the typical uh, ratios right. of so most there's, stocks? So there's price per earnings, which is also called the multiple. And when if you do if you do an examination of a stock, you're going to see price per earnings. So typically, let's say, and here's the easiest way to understand price per earnings. Let's say you owned a grocery store, and uh, I don't know, it was making a hundred thousand dollars a year after everything, after you paid everything, you paid all the employees, you paid yourself, you paid everyone and everything, and it still had a hundred thousand dollars at the end of the year. And then you and somebody made you an offer to buy that grocery store. So what would you? What do you think somebody should offer on that grocery store? You're Phil? asking me. Yeah. What do you think? Okay, I'd say uh, if as a seller, I'd want ten times earnings. Okay, great. So I'd want a million dollars for okay, the store. You, right. But and if I was the buyer, mm -hmm. I'd make an argument to buy it for four hundred thousand. Yeah, right. So some exactly. So somewhere between four and ten times earnings is what you would buy it for. And yeah, and this, ten, is just ten a, is high. this is just a, a ballpark yeah. idea of what I would be thinking. Exactly. So ten is high. And four is probably low. So somewhere in between, there would probably be what the person would get. And if the person was a good negotiator, I might end up at a five and a half or something. Yeah, exactly. Whatever. Something exactly. Like, right. we, we call that a cap rate of five and a half cap, essentially. Uh, it's not really a cap. It's, it's, it, it's, it's it, a little bit it, different. It's, it's, it's the same thing. Yeah. It's the same damn formula. Right. Really, it is. So, so basically, so now we've got stocks. And just to give you a rough idea, and if you ever look at the PE, which is it's called PE, if you ever look at the PE, it's also called the multiple, which is what that is. Is time how many times more 
that the that the uh, you know the uh, company is selling for in a stock share than what it's worth. So let's go over to Facebook since we were just talking about it. So Facebook right now is selling for 36 times earnings. Now, that's not a bad multiple. It's kind of high if you just use the example we just gave. It's kind of high, but it's one of the most profitable companies on the planet. Right. So, so it has a right to be high. Yeah, so somebody paying 36 times earnings is saying, hey, you know, Facebook's pretty innovative. They might come out with something new that would that would make that make up that money plus they you know they haven't reported earnings yet maybe it'll even be better and better and better so that that could be why they're selling for 36 times earnings if we take a look at apple uh we can actually take a quick look and see that apple is selling for give me a second i just gotta call it up is selling for hold on i feel like what you're on the phone with one of those with uh, one of those people and they say, oh, my computer's tick slow. Tock, yeah, tick right, exactly. Tock, so their earnings is 34.97 or 35 times earnings, right around the same as, as Facebook, as a matter of fact. And they're actually the most profitable company on the planet. Yeah. So right. then we take a look at Tesla. And if I pull up Tesla today, the current multiple is, is um, <laughs> I mean, it's unbelievable when you start to see what, what these numbers are. So it actually went down a little bit. It's not as high as it used to be. It's only 1,082 times earnings. Yeah. 1,082 times earnings. That doesn't even, it doesn't even make any possible sense. I believe that they will, they will be worth this number in about 50 years. What's most likely <laughs> going to happen is at some point, reality is going to set in. You know, this reminds me of back in the summer of 2000 when the stock market crashed pretty bad. You had... All these day traders running up the cost of uh, certain stocks. And, you know, when things went bad, it went bad in a big way. And there was a major correction in the summer of 2000. You know, so just ridiculous multiples, things of that nature. Yeah, so that's why Tesla is a stock that I stay away from. Because it, it's one day it's going to correct and it's going to correct. First of all, if it went to... If it went to one tenth its value, which would be about fifty bucks, it would probably be a normal number. If it was trading around fifty bucks right now, a hundred times earnings would be a normal number because Tesla has room to run. Of course, you know it's an innovative company; they'll be making more money, etc. Hundred times earnings makes sense to me, but a thousand times earnings makes absolutely no sense to me. So, so a lot of you guys are out there. You're like, "Oh, Tesla's moving. Tesla's moving. Tesla's moving. Let's let's play it. Let's play it. Let's play it." I don't like it just because. It's a thousand times earnings. There are other there, look. There are some stocks that are negative earnings, but they're negative earnings, knowing that they're going to come back one day or believing that they're going to come back one day. But this is just ridiculous. Okay. It makes absolutely no sense. All right. What's the next true or false question? Then we went onto that tangent. By the way, if you want to call in, eight five five nine three nine eleven thirty seven eight five five nine three nine eleven thirty seven. And of course, if you want to take a class and learn all about this stuff. You want to learn about real estate and stock options trading? Go to InvestorSchooling.com and RSVP for this Thursday night's class. InvestorSchooling.com, RSVP for Thursday night's class. And, and look, somebody else call in, 855-939-1137. We'd love to talk to you. All right, what's the next one, Phil? Why don't we go to a commercial? I'd like to get in at least one or one or two commercials. All right, we can show. do that. <laughs> All right, John, take us out. Hi, I'm Phil Falcone from InvestorSchooling.com. I'm inviting you to a complimentary class in Langhorn this Thursday night at 7 p.m. I will teach you how to buy ugly houses and make them beautiful. As a bonus, we will also teach you stock option investing. So get your butt to this meeting, 7 p.m. this Thursday night, Langhorn, 215-876-3002, InvestorSchooling.com. Hey, everybody, it's Larry Sinus from InvestorSchooling.com. You heard my partner, Phil Falcone, tell you why you should be there this Thursday night to learn about real estate investing and learn about stock options trading. We're telling you right now, you will make more money than you've ever made in your entire life if you learn these two skills. Be there this Thursday night at 7 o'clock in our Langhorn headquarters. Go to InvestorSchooling.com. Pull over right now. Take out your phone and go to InvestorSchooling.com. RSVP right now. InvestorSchooling.com. See you Thursday. I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. I got a question for you. What do you get for $4.95 a month at Executech Suites? You get an office big enough for one person. You get the furniture in that office. You get the telephone on the desk. You get the telephone number. You get the fax number. You get the internet. You get two full-time receptionists to answer the phone in the name of your company and patch the calls to you, whether you're in the office, in your car, or at home sleeping on a couch. 
You get the conference rooms. You get the mailboxes. You get the printer, the copy, the scanner. You get the janitorial service, the utilities, and free coffee. I know it's hard to believe that you could get all those things for $495 a month, but it's true. 67 Buck Road in Huntington Valley, Executech Suites. Give us a call, 215-942-7701. 215-942-7701. Hey, everybody. It's Larry Sinus from InvestorSchooling.com. And I'm Phil Falcone from InvestorSchooling.com. Hey, what are we going to teach him this Thursday night, Phil? We're going to teach you how to invest in real estate so you can build a basis to get rich. And I promise I'm going to teach you stock options. So go to InvestorSchooling.com and RSVP right now. Right, Phil? We've been in this business for 30 years. We have amazing amounts of information to share with you. Get your butt to this meeting this Thursday night in Langhorn. Investorschooling.com. All right, all right, all right. What's happening, everybody? Welcome back to the show. Welcome back to the crazy show. We are Investor Schooling Live. And by the way, if you guys didn't know, we actually transmit from our headquarters we're actually in Langhorne we're in our headquarters right now in the basement we built a studio that we transmit from so we have everything here and we talk directly to the radio station through this studio and uh, John Cole he's our producer today and when you call him you're actually calling him in Philadelphia we're here in Langhorne and we connect via the internet kind of a really cool system and the reason I bring that up is if you guys ever want to have a tour of the studio feel free to come on and ask us about a tour and if you want to become a student, or if you want to learn a little bit more about how to become a student, go to InvestorSchooling.com, and you could sign up. And of course, of course, of course, if you're out there right now and you have a question for us, or you want to talk to us about anything that has to do with real estate, stock options, or anything that has to do with money, give us a call right now at 855-939-1137, 855-939-1137. You know, I was just thinking ooh, about ooh, ooh. this. I have something important to say. You have something important to say? I, I find that very hard to believe. Do you have an alarm sound on your uh, control panel uh, over there? Alarm sound, like like a like an alarm clock kind of sound. Uh, any, anything that kind of alerts the people out there that I'm about to say something really critical. Oh well, we have this one. That's good. That's Is good. that a good one? Okay, you want me to do it again because you're about to say something yeah, critical. Do, do it one more time. Okay, here we go. Alert! Investor Schooling Live is looking for Mary Ann Farrell <laughs> to call 855-939-1137. 855-939-1137. If you know Mary Ann Farrell, please text her or call her right now. Let her know that Phil Falcone from Investor Schooling Live needs to speak with her urgently. And that she gets a $100 gift card, a Visa gift card, because she called in because we need to talk to her. Yeah. All and, right. Okay. And uh, all our friends are going. <laughs> no? No, it's okay. All so right, it's I okay. need another alarm now because I got something else important to say. You want the same alarm? It's fine. That alarm is fine. Okay. Investor Schooling has a major announcement. Another one. We now have a billboard oh, yeah. on the Pennsylvania Turnpike located roughly. In Huntington Valley by Buck Road. That's it? That was your major announcement? That's a major announcement. That's yeah. it. We ha your major announcement is that we have a billboard. Wow. I, I don't know what to say, man. I just don't know what to say. I was kind of hoping, like, your major announcement was, you know, we bought a new building or, or we, you know, we have, you know, we, we have some new stuff. I can't even talk about the funds we're doing because we're not allowed. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about that, too. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Geez, we got a radio show, but we're not allowed to talk about it. Yeah, I know, exactly. All right, so everybody, it was really nice talking to you. No, I'm like, all right, so. So let me, you know. We have another true or false question, or no? No, no, I'm done with the question. Oh, you're, done, you're done with that? Okay. You know what I'd like to do? I'd like to tell people about all the radio stations we're on. Can we do that? You can do that. Is that true or false? Oh, hey, here, here, here you go. Hey, Phil, here's the true or false statement. Are we on a lot of radio stations? True, we are. Cool. We are on 1210 WPHT AM, Sundays at 3 p.m., Saturdays at 2 p.m. in Philadelphia. We are also on 92.1 WVLT-FM, Sunday at 4 p.m., Wednesdays at 10 p.m. And they're located in Vineland, New Jersey, in South Jersey. So Tony, Tony from New Jersey, who called us earlier, you can listen to that station, too. 
Then there's the super powerhouse run by the great Sam Spicer. 860 WWDBAM, Mondays at 2 p.m., Saturdays at 2 p.m. in Philadelphia. We're also on 1450 WCTC AM, Saturdays at 9 a.m., and that's a North Jersey, Central Jersey station. And last but not least, 1250 WMTR AM, Saturdays at 11 a.m. That's North Jersey, Central Jersey. How about that? We're in a lot of places. So you know what? If you're listening to one of those stations right now, and you want to call, somebody will answer the phone. 855-939-1137. We will answer the phone. But, uh, you know, you mentioned the, the great Sam Spicer, you know, and I have him on the line. Hold on. I don't get that. Eh, I didn't get it either. It didn't, it didn't, it didn't, the sound effect didn't look as good as the name of it. it the name of it was Dinosaur Roar. Dinosaur Roar. Yeah, so I kind of thought that, you know, that was a better, you know, but nah, it didn't work. Okay, you want to talk a little bit about our stock option picks of the week? Stock option picks of the week already? Well, we can wait till the end. Okay. We got a couple questions that were emailed in. These, right, are, not, these are not true and false questions. They're not? No, they're not. Uh, is it true or false that they're not true or false questions? Yeah. Okay. It, it is true and false. That they're not true and false questions. Right. Okay. That's very complicated. One of the questions is, <laughs> these are the ones that are emailed in. Sometimes they're not the best questions. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. Um, info at investorschooling.com. If you're shy and don't want to be on the radio... Like Marianne Farrow. <laughs> Info at investorschooling.com. You just email us your questions and we'll read them on the lot on the air. So one of our questions this week is do you guys use realtors when buying real estate? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, can I answer that, Larry? Is it okay if I start? No, no, no. I, I want to answer because I want to have a run on no, sentence. No, no, I want to answer. No, no, I, I think I want to answer because I want to have I want to be accused of a run on sentence. All right, go ahead. No, you can answer. Go ahead. I was not kidding. The truth is that we're both realtors. So, by definition, we don't use realtors because we are realtors, and we don't really need their help. <laughs> yeah, but, but, uh, but you know, it's funny. We get we, people reach out. Realtors reach out to us and saying, "Hey, can I, can I help you?" And I'm like, and I'm like, eh, probably not. But you can certainly join our agency. Uh, yeah, do you want to tell them about that? We have an agency. We have an agency where you essentially get a hundred percent commission, and uh, I don't know about you, but it's hard to beat a hundred percent. Yeah, and what's nice about that is we're, we're dealing with mostly investors. You know, it's really cool to deal with investors. So, you know, like, you know, if you have a house or so that's a million-dollar house in Bucks County, we're probably not the real estate agents for you. But I don't mind the $60,000 commission, so if you want to call me, that's okay with me. But I, but we're probably not the real estate agent for you. But if you're an investor, we're probably the real estate agent for you. And the cool thing about it is if you, bec if you become an agent in our office, you become an agent who works with investors, and investors buy multiple properties. So, yeah, you might not make $60,000 in one deal, but you might make $60,000 from the same client over and over again. That's what's really cool. So you can have less clients and make more money. So it's kind of neat. That's what our, 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 uh, our agency is different. Look, we're, I, honestly, you know, we, we're, uh, we're just having fun with this, just like everything else. So if you want to become an agent at us, let us know. But more importantly, if you want to become part of the school, go to InvestorSchooling.com, and you can find out about both. What's the next question, Phil? The next question is a real doozy. Is your brokerage, investor brokerage, friendly to investors? Wait a minute. <laughs> I, 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 okay, I did not know that that was the next question. I want you to know I did not see the paper that Phil has in his hand. This was not a setup. So I'm going to have to say, well, yes, we are. Because yeah, I just said that. Of course it's a setup. I mean, uh, I am a self-promoter. Anything I'm involved in, I'm promoting. Really? Yes. Do you buy houses? Yes, I buy houses. How would somebody know that? Uh, a number of ways, starting with maybe my car is wrapped with a giant I buy houses wrap. Hey, is anybody in the Philadelphia, if you're in the Philadelphia area, has anybody seen Phil's red BMW that says I buy houses? By the way, if you if you don't, if you haven't seen it and you do see it, make sure you, you know, pull him over and say hi and ask him for an autograph and say something like, uh, you know, what, what, you know, your, your line from the school, say it. I'm going to teach you how to buy ugly houses and make them beautiful. And then make sure when you're done, you tell them. He sounds like a mafioso shyster. <laughs> it never gets old. No, you can keep playing it. I don't mind. <laughs> I know. All right. We're kind of like, we're slowing down here. I don't so think so. We kind of need to bring it up. What should we do? You want to talk a little bit about some of the huge wins you had this week? 
Oh, I had some really, I've had some great wins actually. So just so, you know, just uh, real quick, you know, I, I started an account, I don't know if I, I could talk a little bit about it. I can only talk about so much of it, but I started an account on September 1st and that account was started with $400,000. And so far that account has distributed uh, over 120,000, sorry. Yeah. Uh, no, 160,000 has distributed over 160,000. So in other words, I took $160,000 out of the account. And I still have four hundred and thirty thousand dollars left. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. And I did that with stock options. Well, Larry, you are officially a real money manager. Yes. I mean, you might not do it for a huge corporation, but you're doing it for real. You're making money for your investors, and uh, if you can keep it up for a couple of years. That'll be one heck of a feat. Right, but I just need to make a disclaimer that no, anyone listening, you cannot get in that fund. That's a private fund, and it was a private fund between me and essentially a few yeah. friends of mine. So I want to make sure you understand that, that but, you uh, cannot get into that because uh, that's a, an SEC violation. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to keep quiet because there's always some SEC violation. <laughs> yeah, there. exactly. I'm going to trip over it. <laughs> Several of the funds that we're uh, involved in, uh, well, can also end, end up with you being in handcuffs if you say the wrong thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so <laughs> there's, we're, we're pretty open about what we talk about here, but this is one topic we yeah. have to be careful. Right. If you, if you, if you want to pull me aside, uh, if you go to Thursday night, if you show up at class at investorschooling.com and you want me to talk to you about funds, not that I can't invite you into the fund, but talk to you about funds and how to create your own fund. We actually teach that. We actually teach you how to create funds. There are certain kinds of funds that you can create. So one of the things that Phil and I in the future would like to do is we'd like to buy really, really big real estate, like 200, 300 unit um, hotels, uh, 200, 300 unit apartment buildings. And we're graduating into that now. And of course, we can't do that with just our money. And we can't do that with just bank's money. We need to do it with people's money. So what we do is we create funds. Now, again, I, I can't have you in the, any of these funds. I want you to make sure you understand that. But what I'm trying to get to is we teach people how to create these funds. So if, you, if your desire is to learn how to buy a huge apartment building or even a 50-unit apartment building, and you need to figure out how to come up with four, three, four, five million dollars million, we're going to teach you how to do that. We're going to teach you how to talk to people the right way and how to not have worries with the SEC when you're creating these funds. And it's awesome. It's actually a really great class. It's one of the classes that we teach here at Investor Schooling. And uh, even if you come in and we're not teaching at the moment, if you become a student, we have several videos on it on our website uh, for our students to watch it. And it's great. It, if you really want to learn how to do this, it's really, really neat. It's a lot of fun. Other people's money is the way to go. Yeah, the one thing I, I really didn't realize about stock options is how much fun it would actually be. Yeah. When you're driving in your car and uh, as a passenger and you go into your <laughs> stock option account and you see that you're up $4,500 for the day, I mean, it's just awesome. It's just awesome. It's yeah. so much fun. There, there are times where I'm like, wow, I can't believe that that just happened. There are times where I got to pull over and sell it because I'm like, wow, that's, that's amazing. I can't believe how much money that we just made. It sounds like this. Yahoo! Yep. And I want you to also understand that it's not this. So the way we teach stock options, a lot of people say stock options is gambling, and it's not. Stock options is, is the way we teach it is not. Uh, there are a lot of people who teach stock options, a lot of people who play stock options, they play it like it's a casino. We do not teach that. In fact, what we teach you is a, a systematic way to make money with stock options that is better than others. You, you, I can't say you can't lose money because you can always lose money, but I will tell you that the odds of losing money are less than other odds because of the way we teach you to play it. I came up with a set of rules. I call it the rules of the crazy options trader. I came up with these rules, um, I don't know, 10, 12 years ago. I, I don't even remember how long ago already. And I started trading them, and they were doing so fantastic that I just started teaching them. And most of our students make a lot of money trading stock options. And when you learn how to follow these rules, you will do really well. Plus, it's a part-time way to trade stock options. We don't teach you to sit in front of your screen all day long and go, oh, no, it's up a cent. Oh, no, it's down a cent. Oh, no, it's up a cent. Oh, no, it's down a cent. We don't teach you how to do that. We actually teach you how to use your cell phone to send you an alert when you should buy and when you should sell a stock option. It's actually that simple. Right, Phil? And then you just go on and do it. It yep. takes a little while to wrap your head around that it's not the easiest thing in the world to learn, 
But if you have an average amount of intelligence, you attend the classes that we teach here regularly, you will easily create for yourself with pure knowledge, just pure knowledge of what we're going to teach you. You can go out there, start an account with $1,000. Really, it doesn't matter. Turn your 1000 into 2000 Turn your 2000 into 4000 and just build it up from there. I currently, we started in January a uh, 401k plan for the employees of the school. And right now, I have, I put in X amount of dollars. I'm not going to tell you how much I put in, but I put in X amount of dollars. And right now, I am just shy of tripling the amount of money I put in. And keep in mind that uh, I, I am a real estate expert, not a stock option expert. I learned stock options from being at this school for the last two and a half years and listening to all the education about the crazy option traders rules and everything that Larry teaches and anybody can do this and it does not take a genius it just takes somebody to listen understand it and then begin to do it on a small scale with I recommend you only do it with a couple of grand just learn how to turn your money into more money and then as your confidence builds as you get more familiar with the system and the stock market and, and everything that we teach here about it, it'll ultimately become easy. It'll ultimately become second nature to you, and you'll be in a position where there's no reason why you couldn't have a couple hundred thousand dollars in your bank account uh, that you trade stock options with over time. Yeah, and feel free if you come on Thursday to in or, again in order to come on Thursday, go to investorschooling.com and RSVP. But if you come on Thursday, ask some of the current students, say, "Hey, how much money did you make this year in stock options? How much money did you make this year in stock options?" And let them tell you. Don't ask us. We, I could tell you. I, by the way, I want you to know that I show my account very often uh, on uh, you know as a demonstration of what's going on. I show my actual account. So you can actually see when I'm losing. You can actually see when I'm gaining. You can see how much money I've made. And you can see that I've made. I, I, I've uh, probably, I probably succeeded in about eighty to eighty-five percent of my trades. And you could actually see those. You could see the amount of money I, I had invested in each trade. I show you. I'm an open book. And there are times where you know I've had a bad month or a bad month or two, and I show you that too. So just understand that I'm not here to hide anything. And anytime anybody wants to see my account as a student. Or as, you know, even just someone who is uh, somebody interested in the school, I show my account. So this is real. This is There's nothing here. There's no smoke and mirrors. We teach a strategic way to trade stock options and, a strate and several strategic ways to invest in real estate and make a lot of money. You will definitely learn how to do it. Investorschooling.com, RSVP for Thursday. All right, where are we now, Phil? Have we mentioned that you can come to a free class Thursday night at 7 o'clock at Investorschooling.com? Is it free or is it complimentary? Uh, I don't like to use words I can't spell, so I use free. <laughs> I don't even know where to go with that. <laughs> can, can you spell? Can you spell my last name? Uh, you can't even spell your last name because you start Steinhaus with an E I N instead of an I E N. Well, that's why that's why I asked you if you could spell my last name because yeah. most people don't know how, don't realize that it's S T E I N, not S T I E N. Yeah, I made fun of the way Larry spells his name at his fiftieth birthday party. We were roasting him. We yes. roasted him at his birthday. That party. was fun, actually. That was years ago. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, we should have recorded that. Yeah, I know. I'm surprised. And actually, you record everything. I'm surprised you didn't record that. Yeah. All right. So, let's go into some stock options picks and let's figure out what the heck is going to go on this week. All right. We have we have the greatest thing happening, which is, <laughs> which is earnings, and we have the worst thing happening, which is the election. So it's kind of a really bad two weeks. Uh, I've already warned my students. I said, start moving into cash. And I've actually said try to be in 75% cash by a couple of days before the election. Now, here's why. And it doesn't really matter who wins or loses. I mean, it really matters who wins or loses. But it doesn't matter who wins or loses for the stock market, believe it or not. What will probably happen is if Biden wins, the stock market's going to tank. And if Trump wins, the stock market's going to go down. They're not the same thing. They're both different scenarios. And the reason is the anticipation of... The election is just like the anticipation of earnings where the stock market is starting to go up. Actually, if it wasn't for COVID, I totally believe the stock market would have peaked at 30000 by now because most of the money managers wanted Trump to win, 
right now they just want to win themselves. They, they're not even interested in Trump or Biden anymore. They're interested in winning and making their own money. And that's what's going on right now. Now, remember, Phil said it. I happen to be a, a fund manager at this point, but I'm a minor fund manager compared to these major guys on Wall Street. And these major guys on Wall Street, you got to remember that they don't think any differently than I do. You know, maybe they think slightly different negative or slightly different positive, but at the same time, they're thinking the same thing I am. Hey, we better get out of here. We better get out of here before earnings because something's going to happen. So they're either going to be they're either going to be selling short, which is going to make the stocks go up temporarily real quick before earnings, or they're going to be selling and getting out and taking any profits they can, holding on to cash. And if that happens, that's going to just by nature force the stock market to go down, force the certain stocks to go down. Well, there's some other factors I could add to that conversation. Sure. Which is normally we would know who the winner of the election is the evening yep. of the election. We would know by 2, 3 o'clock in the morning we would know. In the 2016 election, it was announced roughly around 3 o'clock in the morning that Trump had won. Problem this time around is, is that we may not know. We may not know for weeks or months and we might not know until Christmas. We might not know until Inauguration Day. It's really scary what might happen this time around. Yeah, the uncertainty is going to be really rough for the stock market, too. It's going to, exactly. I, would, I, would, I would see the VIX peaking and, and some crazy stuff happening if there's uncertainty. So I'll tell you what I, I'm thinking. It's just my opinion. I follow the stock market every day. I got, it on, uh, I got uh, Fox Business News running between the hours of 9.30 and 4 every, every weekday with a TV in front of me no matter where I'm at because I generally have a TV in front of me. I'm the kind of guy who walks into a room and turns the TV on. Uh, I suspect that this is going to be a really bad patch for the stock market just because the longer the uncertainty goes on, mm -hmm. the more negative people are going to get about keeping their money sitting in there. And could there be a potential amazing buying opportunity in December? Maybe. So I have a, I have an interesting I, – I made a post today on Facebook. It wasn't an accurate post, but I'm going to ask – and I did it just for, for being fun. But I'm going to ask you what you think. Will oil stocks go up or down if Biden becomes president? You're asking me? Yeah, I'm asking. I'm curious to see what your opinion is. Uh, theoretically, they should definitely go down. So I'm going to say that they're actually going to go up by a lot. Now, I know this is kind of weird. It's contradictory because you think Biden's going to stop. You know, he's going to do this whole mess for, uh, you know, for oil industry. That's what's going to make the stock go up, actually. What's going to make oil stocks go up is the fact that Biden is going to is going to be elected and said he was going to crush the oil industry. He's, first of all, he's not going to crush the oil industry. We all, we all know that for sure. But what will also happen is because of that, the oil industry will put the rest of the world in a panic mode. Oil prices will go up, and if oil prices go up, what happens to the oil industry? It, stocks go up. So stocks like OXY, Oxy will go up, and the reason they will go up is because because of this uncertainty. It's just like when and it's just like when Biden was president. I'm sorry, Biden. Yeah, God, God forbid. When uh, when uh, Obama was president, the gun stocks all went up because he was threatening to take away our guns. And that's why the gun stocks went up. The funny part was when Trump became president, gun stores closed. Okay, and but regardless of all that, if we're stuck in this uh, period of, insert, of, of uncertainty, I think I'm going to keep my money on the sidelines. Yeah, I agree. Right? I think I'm going to sit and be patient and wait for the right moment and jump back in when I feel like I can really you know, benefit from it. All right, so <clears> – <throat> Thanks to our producer, John Cole, for helping us out today. If you're interested in becoming a sponsor on our show, email us, info at investorschooling.com. That's info at investorschooling.com. And don't forget to visit investorschooling.com for your free and complimentary class, Thursday night at 7 p.m. on real estate investing and stock option investing. I'm Phil Falcone with Larry Steinhouse. We out of here.